Hey GED students, um, I had a student on YouTube, I see pupils, send me in this word problem. So let's take a look. It says each can of lacquer covers 15 square feet. If Diego wants to lacquer the surface of a round table 12 feet in diameter, how many cans of lacquer should he buy? Okay, so a couple of things going on here. One, I know I have a round table. So I'm just gonna kind of sketch this out here. And I know a dimension of my round table. It says that it's 12 feet in diameter. So if you remember, diameter uh, is a line that goes from side to side through the center of a circle. There's the diameter. So we've, there's our round table uh, that's 12 feet in diameter. All right, now I want to lacquer the surface of this table, meaning I want to basically cover the surface. Right there, that's a huge clue, the fact that we're covering the surface, which is a two-dimensional shape here, that we are looking at an area problem. Covering a surface is area. An example of area. There's another clue in this problem that says this is an area problem. Notice that it said um, each can of lacquer covers 15 square feet. Remember that it is area that is measured in square units. Whether they say, you know, square feet, square inches, square yards, square meters, those are all examples of area. Okay, so uh, I think where I need to start here is finding the area of this table because finding the area of this table is going to tell me how many total square feet uh, I need to cover. So let's go for it. So uh, what I would do here if I didn't know the area of a, what shape is this circle? If I didn't know the area of a circle formula, um, I could hit up the GED formula sheet if I, if I don't know how to do it. And you'll see under the area section, which is the second section down, uh, area of a circle is A is equal to this little funny symbol known as pi and then R squared. Pi times the radius squared. Now, so let's go ahead and plug into that so we can find out the square feet of this uh, table. So area is what we're looking for. Pi uh, is what we call an irrational number. It's a number whose decimal form goes on and on forever, but you can use the a decimal approximation 3.14 uh, for pi on the GED. Now we're supposed to put in R next. Remember R is the radius, uh, not the diameter of the circle. You guys need to watch out. A lot of you just assume that whatever number you have is going to be the number you need. But the radius of a circle only goes from the outside to the center. And if you notice, take this diameter here that I drew is actually two uh, radius. So another way to look at that is a radius is half a diameter. So if our uh, diameter from one end all the way to the other is 12, then each one of these pieces must be six. And so the radius of our circle is six. So I'm going to plug a six here in parentheses. Now, why am I putting it in parentheses? Since the pi and the r are shoved together like that in the formula, that means they're multiplying. So I'm saying to myself, multiply these two numbers. And then I'm not going to forget that the formula told me to square r. Now you can plug that entire thing into your GED calculator, um, 3.14 times six squared, just exactly the way you see it. Uh, but since I came back here and forgot my GED calculator, I'm hiding in my bedroom making math videos, I'm gonna have to use the order of operations and my, my decimal skills to uh, simplify this. So I remember that order of operations says I should do exponents before multiplication. So I will square six. So I won't touch 3.14, and then 6 times 6 is 36. And now to do 3.14 times 36, when I multiply decimals, I kind of just ignore the fact that they have decimals and multiply them as if the decimals weren't there. 6 times 4 is 24. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 2 is 8. 6 times 3 is 18. Now I'm going to go ahead and skip a space there so I can start multiplying with my 3. 3 times 4 is 12. Carry a 1 this time. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4, and 3 times 3 is 9. Now I'll add together what I got from my 1's place with what I got from my 10's place. 12, 13, 10, 11. And finally, at the very end, I'll face facts that this is a decimal problem. A total of two decimal places in the problem means a total of two decimal places in the answer. So the area of this sucker is about 113.04. And what? 
113 watt, 113.04 square feet. Now, obviously, this is not the end of this problem because it doesn't say how many square feet is the table. If you look at my question, it says, how many cans of lacquer should he buy? How many cans of lacquer should he buy? I need the relationship between cans of lacquer and square feet. And that was given to me in the very first sentence. Go take a look. It says each can of lacquer covers 15 square feet. There it is, the relationship between cans of lacquer and square feet. Well, I've got 113 square feet. And if you think about it, this whole thing's 113 square feet. You know, we're going to cover 15 square feet with one pea, with one can of lacquer, 15 square feet with another can of lacquer, 15 square feet with another can of lacquer, and so on and so forth. Basically, we're taking our area and we're breaking it into equal sized pieces. Well, what is that? That's a picture of division. So I'm going to take this 113.04 square feet, and I'm going to break it into 15 square feet segments uh, to find out how many cans of lacquer I need. Let me go ahead and erase my side work over here, because once again, I forgot my calculator, and that means I get to divide by hand. So we'll flip the order when we use a divide into symbol, that long division house. So 15 goes into 113.04. Okay, let's go. Let's see, 15 won't go into one, of course, or 11, but it will go into 113 how many times? Let's see, what if I guess about five times? Five times five is 25. Uh, five times one is five plus two is seven. Mm, I need some more 15s, definitely not high enough. I'll add in another 15. That gives me 90. Another 15 gives me 105. There we go. I think I'm high enough now. So that was 5, 6, 7 15s. 7 15s give me 105. Now I'll subtract that out to see what I have left. I've got 8 left and I'll drop another digit, 80. Now here's the deal guys. When we do decimal division, we know that decimals float straight up here. Now we can think about this, 15 goes into 80 how many times? Well, we know it goes in five times because we just figured out that 15 times five is 75. Now, I could keep dividing, I could, I still have numbers, but I don't need to, because here's the deal. Look back again at the question. It says, how many cans of lacquer should he buy? I want you to imagine that you go to Home Depot, you walk up to the guy and you say, hello, I'd like 7.5 cans of lacquer. The guy at Home Depot is going to look at you like you're crazy. He's going to say to you, lady or dude, you can either have seven cans or eight cans, but I'm not going to sell you 7.5 cans. You know, we buy lacquer by the can here. And so here's the deal. He doesn't have, if he only buys seven cans, he will not have enough. He'll have part of a table left over. So this dude is going to have to buy eight cans because he lives in the real world. And that's how the real world works. They sell lacquer by the cans. <laughs> Okay, so he's just going to have to round up to eight cans to make sure that he can cover that whole table. And whew, I hope he really budgeted his money for lacquer. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.